All right, today I have an Aeolian Volcalion. This was one of the off-brand phonographs popular in the teens and early 20s. This is the E-Type tabletop model, as you can see. It uh, has a very small Swiss two-spring motor in it. And uh, there should be fabric, of course, here. This is the sound door. It really doesn't do anything except hide the horn opening when the fabric is on it because the Victor patents would have prevented it from acting as an actual sound modifier as it does on the Victor machines or louvers as was used on the Columbias. Now, Aeolian was a piano and organ manufacturer. So they made the case and they contracted out the hard part, you know, the motor and the turntable, all that stuff. You can see it's got a little boo-boo here. I'm doing this one for a customer. They are going to resell it, so they have requested a minimum of new parts be used. So, while I have repaired the reproducer, it was badly cracked over here, and the needle bar was bent like a pretzel. I have not replaced any of the gaskets, though they do still have a little bit of ply, you know, they're a little bit pliable in there. So they're not horrible, they're not terrible gaskets in there, and of course the uh, diaphragm is still was still good, all that. See, this is pot metal here, and it swelled and cracked in two places, as is common enough. And on the back, it's actually me. I want to rotate that down without hitting the record with the needle. There we go. That's actually Bakelite. It's a form of early primitive plastic, kind of like what they used to use to make telephones out of. And it's an excellent material to use here because you can see it's uh, kept its shape. It hasn't swollen or cracked or anything else in 100 years. So that's not too bad. Now, there are some uh, similarities here to the Victor tone arm, mostly in the crane support in the back. But the rest of the tone arm is not. I don't know if Aeolian came up with that themselves or they contracted the Swiss for it. One way or the other, it works. Only problem with it is really nowhere to put the reproducer, so you gotta keep rotating it up like that so it doesn't hit the record or impact into the needle cups and the uh, motorboard. And Vocalion, of course, is a well-known record label. They used to use it for sheet music back in the day, and since Aeolian already owned that division, they simply called their new phonograph the Aeolian Vocalion. You know, for the parent company and for the record company that would eventually make the records that were intended to play on this. You can see it's fairly standard, straightforward type of control. There's your speed control and your bullet type brake, which works. The turntable tends to wobble a little bit, but that's the Swiss. At this point in time, the Swiss motors tended to be a little bit on the primitive side. Things like that highly adjustable bearing in the governor shafts, on either side of the governor, that doesn't exist in this period. It's about 1918, 1919, somewhere around in there is my guess. Uh, it's just a, basically just sitting there on a plain bearing, so you can't really adjust it as well as you do to later ones. That makes it a little easier to deal with in some ways, but uh, not quite as sophisticated as the later models were. Fortunately, they did not change the dimensions of the springs. So I was able to salvage a spring, as one of the springs was broken in this, I was able to salvage a spring from a later machine, a later Swiss motor, and uh, make it work in this. Yeah, it's a typical crank, and nothing, nothing particularly, you know, amazingly different about this. Like I said, it was an off-brand, which is a term used to indicate brands that were not the pair, the big companies like Victor, Edison, Columbia, Brunswick, Sonora. Those were the companies that had all the best patents. And every other manufacturer that got into the business kind of had to work around it or they had to pay a royalty. And very often they can only afford to pay for two or three patents use. Like, say, the lid from Victor or maybe, uh, you know, tone arm support or something like that. Or none at all if they contracted out a whole motor from a foreign company like the Swiss. But let's see how it sounds. It actually sounds pretty good considering it does not have a rebuilt reproducer, just a repaired one. We have Nevermind by, let's see, who is that? The All-Star Trio and their orchestra. Uh, she spins right up good. It's a little bit awkward to do this tone arm one-handed, so let's do that. Very carefully set it on there. There's a crack in the record.
is no automatic brake on this, so you have to engage the manual. And then, heard a little clicking noise in the record. That's because the record has a little small crack in it, but it still sounds pretty good. And it's period correct for a phonograph of this era. And you can see, just take the needle out and you put it in this cup right here. That's your spent needle cup. These three cups right here are your low tone, medium tone, loud tone needles. Three different kinds. I don't have them filled at the moment, but I actually had to source those from another machine and somewhere missing. The black one in the middle is original to the Vocalion. The two on the outside are from a Cheney, I believe, or something like that, because they're chrome plated or nickel plated. But that's all right. They fit, they work, and they fill the holes. And uh, we got a little lock up here in the corner and an odd triangular shaped key this would use, but I do not have. I, mean, I don't know if I can see Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> I don't have one of the keys for it, so we're just going to leave that be. And as a good idea, if you do have a key for one of these machines, never, ever lock them. Because if you do that, it may break, and then how do you get it open without damaging the machine? Not worth it. There's no reason to lock them. Never do it. You can see the beautiful work they did on this case. As I said, Aeolian was a piano and organ manufacturer. It's, it's mahogany veneer on hardwood. It's all nicely joined in the corners. It did just do a plain corner, just nicely pieced in here. And then they did a really good job with it, as you would expect from a piano manufacturer, an organ manufacturer, because this is the kind of materials they used in those kinds of machines. And it'll be up to the customer if they want to replace that fabric or not. Uh, that'll be up to them or whoever ends up owning it, if they sell it, which I believe they're planning to do. You see it's got a tin horn in there. I don't know if that's brass or zinc. I really didn't look into it. Could be any, either or. Fairly straightforward. Nice machine. Aeolians are, uh, they turn up from time to time, and uh, there's, there's a variety of different uh, tone arms they use, and reproducers, and I'm sure they probably use some Heinemann, Heinemann motors in there eventually. I don't think they stuck with the Swiss indefinitely. But there you go, Aeolian Vocalion. Around about the mid to late teens, early 20s, somewhere in there.